objective that it's trying to achieve. If that objective is not perfectly aligned with, with the values of, of us humans, um, then that creates the possibility for bad things to happen. For uh, that, in some sense, is the definition of conflict. Um, and getting into a conflict with systems that are more and more capable than we are doesn't sound like a good idea. So the solution uh, seems to be that uh, we have to make sure the values of the machine are aligned with the values of the human race. Mm -hmm. um, so one way to get that to happen is for the machine to observe what humans do. Uh, not only what we do, but what is our attitude to what we do and what other people do. So if someone gets put in jail, we learn that that was an act contrary to human values. If someone makes, gets up in the morning, makes a cup of coffee, um, then you, the machine learns that you know, having some coffee in the morning is, is, is valuable to humans, <laughs> vital to humans. Uh, and um, there, is, there is a lot of information out there. Who gets to decide what is positively beneficial? Is it going to be some government agency or some bureaucracy? Who gets to decide? Because, for instance, if you take autonomous drones, well, what the human would want them to do is be really accurate and have precision, you know, so that it'll strike its target. But maybe the person on the receiving end of that drone strike, that's not going to be beneficial to them. And we know sometimes war is waged for the wrong reasons, and people decide for the wrong reasons that they want this machine to, to do their bidding, basically. So. I mean, that's not really something that people can even backtrack. That technology is already there. Um, but so who, who kind of gets to decide what's beneficial? And, and is there any way to control some of the systems that are already growing? Uh, so that's a great question. Um, I, th I think the issue of autonomous weapons is, is a very immediate one, and in some ways much more immediate than the kinds of things we've just been talking about. Um, and my own view is that um, it, it's a mistake to think just about replacing current functions that are done by humans with machines. So right now we have drones, but they're, the targeting decisions are made by a human who you know, is getting the remote uh, video feed from the drone, and the human <clears throat> identifies the target and the human uh, pulls the trigger. Uh, and so people are talking about, is it acceptable to replace that particular function with a computer program? Uh, and the argument then focuses on accuracy and, and uh, you know, moral agency and liability and responsibility and you know, whether it exactly fits the Geneva Convention uh, and issues like that. Um, and that argument is playing out right now in the United Nations. Uh, so, so it will get resolved one way or the other and, and that's the right place. I think the the, the collection of nations of the world need to decide on what, what kinds of uh, military capabilities are actually allowable. Yeah. Um, but the reason I think it's a mistake is because it assumes that everything remains the same, that we just replace an existing human function with, a, with an algorithm or a machine and, and nothing else changes. But in fact, if you have autonomous weapons, you're going to have an arms race of autonomous weapons because uh, once you have autonomous attack weapons, then you need autonomous defense weapons because you know human reaction times are going to be too slow. Um, you're going to then look at autonomous attack weapons that are anti-personnel. Um, you know, for example, clouds of miniaturized flying flying robots against which it's impossible to defend. And and you could imagine getting to a situation where you know the life expectancy of a, a human soldier would be. 10 seconds mm -hmm. on the battlefield and, and life expectancy of a civilian, if a government used those weapons against its own population, would be you know two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could wipe out every inhabitant of a city uh, in a few minutes for a few million dollars. Mm -hmm. it, this is just not a direction that I think we should go. No. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've made decisions about biological weapons, for example, um, in the past that this is not a direction we should go and we stopped. Uh, and my view is that the arms race that would ensue if we do go ahead with autonomous weapons would be disastrous.
the knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack. Combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the Secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it. And it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, we know that the CIA has been controlling corporate media for decades. That came out in the 70s when those revelations uh, came out during the church committee. But now, Dr. Udlo Ulfkot, he's the editor of a Frankfurt paper, he says that the CIA routinely plants stories in the establishment media, and this includes stories that are not only untrue, but they've resulted in the death of thousands of people. And he points out some examples of stories that he was ordered to plant in his newspaper over the years, including a story that Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi was building poison gas factories in 2011. There was a bogus chemical weapons stories that were appearing in the media prior to the invasion of Libya. Of course, that ultimately resulted in the death of 30,000 people. And similar fake stories were also used as war propaganda in the lead up to the invasion of Iraq. Uh, these were summarily dismissed as intelligence failures. Never forget Nurse Nayira. Uh, but look at this double standard. On Monday, a former CIA employee, Jeffrey Sterling, was convicted of giving classified information to a New York Times reporter. The leak concerned an effort by the CIA to sabotage plans for an Iranian nuclear reactor. Now, the Attorney General Eric Holder said that the disclosures place lives at risk and get this. He said that they constituted an egregious breach of the public trust by someone who had sworn to uphold it. Oh, the irony, it's maddening there. They, they say the very things that they are guilty of. But of course, no such criticism was directed at the CIA, which has controlled the corporate media for decades, constantly filling them with the information that they want them to report. And now it's not just the federal government, but it's trickling down to the state level. I've been to several press conferences, and oftentimes they will tell you what they want you to hear, not so much what you want to know. This could be as simple as just handing you a press release, these are the only topics that we want to talk about, or a politician abruptly leaving the stage after their speech has concluded. So I'm very curious why a governor in Indiana feels the need for his own media outlet. It could be very benign subject matters such as maybe talking about the Hoosiers, you know, pictures of his family and friends hanging out with the constituents at barbecues and so forth. But is it unethical for somebody to use taxpayer funds to promote themselves in a positive light? Governor Mike Pence, 
is starting a state-run taxpayer-funded news outlet that will make pre-written news stories available to Indiana media, as well as sometimes break news about his administration, according to documents obtained by the Indianapolis Star. The news service has two dedicated employees whose combined salary is nearly $100,000, according to a search of the state employee's salary data. Another journalist put it this way, Mike Pence's horrible idea. In recent months, the administration has hired staff, including a former journalist. They have written test stories and quietly worked toward the launch date. And this is just in news media. This is the organization that wants to launch the news outlet, and I do believe it's going to start up pretty soon. And for all the previously mentioned reasons, yes, this does concern me, but it's not just in Indiana. We see via the FCC, the government is controlling a lot of what you see on mainstream television. In 2014, the FCC commissioner lifted a lid on a shocking White House proposal that would put researchers in the newsroom with reporters, editors, and station owners to find out how they decided which stories to run with. It's very shocking indeed, and yes, I do believe that will lead to media censorship, people being intimidated by constantly having somebody looking over their shoulder. And let us not forget that the CIA will now openly propagandize Americans. That's an article from 2013 by Kurt Nimmo. And we'll end tonight with this. The government has promised to stop lying because of sites like the Drudge Report. And to anybody skeptical that the government would ever lie or purposely withhold information, take a look at this clip from the Department of Defense. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. Looking to the broader military community, all leaders must understand the role of the press and the importance of working with the media. And we cannot hide our bad news stories. Bad news gets out one way or the other, and we must come to terms with telling the bad stories as well as the good. When bad things happen, the American people should hear it from us, not as a scoop on the Drudge Report. <laughs> Unlike many fine red wines, bad news does not get better with age. <laughs> Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Yes. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Were you one of those poor souls who got stuck in the Snowmageddon? Dan Badandi reported that they even declared martial law in Rhode Island. We're going to get a report coming from him later. But it was the snowpocalypse that never was. It never happened. Forecasters failed on the blizzard. Meteorologists were forced to apologize for exaggerating this Snowmageddon, their Snowmageddon predictions. 
Now, of course, this over-exaggeration was predicted to be the worst ever blizzard to ever hit the East Coast just two days ago. So. In